Welcome back to the Brighter Side of Blue, our worldwide podcast coming to you almost live from the Enterprise Center, home of single-handedly the largest and the best fundraiser for backstoppers, Guns and Hoses. And the biggest beer sale that Enterprise ever has. Yeah, throughout the year. Yeah, yeah. I knew that. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's an amazing thing. Who are you? I'm Danny. I'm Tommy. I'm JJ. Producer Jim. And Sean Mazzola. Sean yeah. Mazzola's big night, baby. Hey, Sean, you have numbers yet on how hold many on, people Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we get there. Hey, Tommy, did you fire me from the uh, being the host? No. Well, then what was that all about? I don't know. He just jumped on in. You know how JJ is. Is he having a seizure? He just jumped on in. <laughs> Swallowing his tongue? I, I was right. just curious. You know, I was just interested. But I know ahead. we don't fact check, but the biggest uh, beer night in the history of this place is when I came here for my birthday with some of my buddies. <laughs> <laughs> for no. Blue, for a blues game? No, All for the whole you. thing, not yeah. individually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tommy, what do we have coming up? So we're going to do things a little different, you know. Oh, because we are stressing Jack and Jake something fierce tonight. Earn um, their keep. Yeah, we're going to do we're we're going to do our show here. We're going to set up here, but um, we're going to do something a little different, you know, we think is uh we've got um Greg Rodden, who is fighting in the second fight, and um, JJ, who, who, did you interview Heather? Yeah, yeah. And uh, the other night at His the um, at the um, Guns and Hoses weigh in, weigh in, uh, we interviewed his wife Heather, and we are going to mic her up and uh, film her watching the fight. So, you know, and that's uh, again, well, this is our plan. So, and then we have another fighter, April Decker, and April. Is a what is she? JJ JJ interviewed her on the other night. She's uh, fighting for the fire department in some small town out of Patulso, Illinois. Illinois. Yes, thank you. And then I think she is a part time. Uh, uh, she's a part time copper. Copper, too. yes. So yep. She does it all. Literally. So she's. Um, so we're gonna ha- then her little small town from Patulso, they take over a party bus here, and all of her friends are on it and her family. So we're going to get them coming off the bus. We're going to do a couple interviews with them. Her buddy Scott. And then her buddy Scott has volunteered to uh, take the mic during that fight. Oh, my. So we're just going to try to do something a little different. And then I think we're going to be at table 99. So table 99 has got our our people at it. Um, A lot of our people, which is my former police commissioner, Mike Quinn, been coming to this thing forever. They don't even know we're coming to the table yet, but we're coming. Um, So then... uh, He's sitting with Chief Spice and Chief Dodge. Uh-oh. Um, immediate beef with J.J. coming. Um, Colonel Quinn was a real, he was a real deal commissioner. So you're so a real so department. Just don't so try to soften just, your yeah. entry. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say anything about Spice and Dodge. You're like, yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah, it's true. But anyway, the Harry Hager sits with them and uh, Danny Schulte and Brian Neger and um, I'm, I think Joe Cruz is in there. So a lot of the guys have been It'll on be the show. Good. It'll be good. So we'll go out and interview those guys and... Um, we're just going to try to have fun. Like I said, we're going to wing it. Stay tuned and see how we do. Yep. So we have Sergeant Mazzola, as promised, back on the night of Guns and Hoses. We had you on. Uh, well, you were on twice, weren't you, leading up to this? Yeah, I plugged it twice. Plugged yep. it twice. You did a great job. So here we are. Day of event. Night of event. How'd it go? How's ticket sales? How's it going? I'll, I'll tell you in a couple hours how it went. Um, <laughs> ticket sales went all right, though. We end up turning some in. Um, this is the first time in ever i think that we've raised ticket prices so i think there's a little sticker shock that we've made it so accessible to the people at home so i know a lot of you guys that are watching this now probably watch it on the uh fight.tv app um on channel two um so if you're doing that let's please make sure you're donating online as well this is a big fundraiser um but we hope you're enjoying it because we put on a hell of a show. We won two Emmys in the last three years. That That's unbelievable. TV, I did not so. know that. That yeah. is pretty incredible. They said yeah. that the other night. That's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, it's a huge deal. So, uh, yeah, so I, I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, the house will be packed still. I know that. And we will do our best to get everybody down in the lower bowl to make sure that's uh, reflected on TV. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's a big, big, big fun event, and we're gonna be there for that six thirty ceremony. It, yeah. It's yeah. weird now they they stream the, the the fights into our. We're in a dressing room here, around right right outside the the, the in the uh, right next to the blues dressing room, right. Yeah, no, w- right across from the ring girls. Yeah, yeah that was a mistake. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go. get on Brian about that. <laughs> <laughs> we're not there's, there's actually a hole in the wall, but we'll let <laughs> right. we'll, we'll let him look. Right. <laughs> But no, they streamed in. So right now we're looking at an empty ringside, uh, empty tables. That that, that place yep. is going to be packed oh, here in a minute. Yeah, <laughs> the doors literally just opened ten minutes ago. So oh, so all right, people are excited. That'll be to come fun. Yeah. I stole a lot of merch off the tables. I uh, hope you guys don't mind that. 
It's yeah, a lot yeah. of, you guys put merch on those tables. Coming in and going out. That's yeah. okay. Right. Corby so, Campbell. So we were at the uh, weigh-in on Monday night. Yeah. What, that was a neat event, and uh, the place was packed. The place was packed, yeah. and the uh, outgoing uh, executive director of um, uh, Backstoppers Rob was there, Michelle. spoken, mm-hmm. speaking, and uh, spoken like that, <laughs> speaking, and he introduced the incoming one, uh, Larry O'Toole. Yes. And uh, they were talking about two point five million dollars a year just to take care of these families of our fallen. Yeah, it's 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 huge. It's a big undertaking, um, and we're doing everything we can. And like I said, the last I want to say four years that we've been doing this is we raised a million dollars every year, uh, wow. just the guns and hoses team alone. Hands that check right over to backstoppers. Hands it over to backstoppers. Yeah, yep. that's so, another so. press conference, right? So we got another one coming. Yeah, <laughs> we do it here yeah. in February. Okay. Yeah. Well, Once we'll, we uh, we'll do one balance last our show books on it. and pay our bills, and then that starts the the, the season for the next one, right? Yeah. Because that, that that's almost. Uh, I know Steve Holly is is that does this year round. Yeah. How yeah. many other staffers do this year round? Uh, there's a couple of us, a core group of us that we're always in contact. Um, uh, our committee is about a hundred hundred people strong uh coming and going wow we have a board of directors that's uh 12 and they oversee everything every dollar that we spend all the money that's coming in and going out uh and making decisions on all the things that we're going to do with the events that we agree to and disagree to um and who we bring on so how about a um quick tell people you know when obviously this is on a monday you know when you're going to hear this but uh the people, the, the police officers you see in uniform here working, directing traffic, um, you know, hopefully they don't have any problems tonight. I don't think they will. Mm-hmm. But uh, let everybody know a little something special about them. Yeah, Enterprise has been a huge uh, and great partner to work with, and that includes our security team and the uh, secondary officers that work here at Enterprise Center. Um, they do this, and they donate their time to work secondary here on this uh for this event and this event alone so it's a huge deal they spend they, it's a long day for them i think they Absolutely. got their call time was two o'clock today so they've yeah. been here since two o'clock and they probably won't leave till 10 or yeah. 11 o'clock jj tonight. stole some stuff out of their uh, out of the police room and they, he got yelled at <laughs> yeah he did <laughs> he got kicked out right away <laughs> uh, he just yeah. on on wow, air he threw me under the bus just dude. snitched <laughs> you out i took one man. bud light out of their refrigerator <laughs> yeah and well, listen and they we'll actually replace don't we'll, they donate they don't even take their salary when they do this uh, that's right. what right yeah, yeah. they, they okay. donate their that time was the, that was the work uh, free part of the yeah. i didn't hear start. actually he didn't say that yeah. yeah, yeah, you did. You said they donated their time. Did, guys, <laughs> uh, am I losing my mind? <laughs> JJ, you did. Uh, I just wanted to re-emphasize it in case you missed it. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. In case we missed the English language spoken clearly. All right, we're moving on. <laughs> but yeah. Sean, it's been a great time, man. This is gonna be a long time. Appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate. You guys are gonna the... see some really good fights. Um, we put on a hell of a show that always end of uh, uh, that end of watch ceremony is really incredible. He was singing the national anthem again. She does an amazing job does. every year. Uh, amazing. She was at warming up uh, out there practicing. Yeah. She takes it seriously. Oh. She does it with she respect. This, and she's this a professional. is her 20th year singing. My goodness. Okay. Her 20th year singing for Guns and Hoses. So wow. it's a She's amazing. Deal. And thank her for that. Yeah. yeah. And so. uh, there's a little surprise that's going to be coming down behind her uh, while she's singing. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Can't wait. I know what it is. Well, don't. It's a surprise. <laughs> it's a teaser. JJ. You're on a roll today, JJ. <laughs> it's going to be cool. All uh, right. You guys got anything else? No, thank you. We are right. Go handle your business. It's been a great, thank you. It's been great partnering thanks, with you guys on this. No, thanks. Yeah, 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 forward to doing it again next year. Hey, thanks for everything you've done, Sean. You. Yeah, Sean, yeah, great thank job. Thank you. You enjoy, did a great enjoy, job. Hey, don't abuse those all-access passes. Let, right. I'm going to Chris Hayes, your partner with the police department. Brian. Give him a good mention. He yeah, helped well. set all of us up. And yeah, Brian's awesome. Yes. Brian Hayes, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're good. Chris, Chris Hayes, Chris is, Hayes is the investigator reporter. Investigative reporter. Fox 2 News. Yeah. He's a good <laughs> Fox 2 News. Yeah, we're going to get on. He's coming on December 19th. Oh. He'll, he'll be at Columbus December 19th. All right. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank That's you, Sean. Fun. Thanks, Sean. Go good get luck. Him. Eva Hi. Malar you Galvain. Galvain. Galvain, French. Is that parlez-vous français? Um, actually, it's Spanish. Spanish, okay. Yeah. Well, I speak both fluently, so. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <Obviously>. Mola. <laughs> yeah, a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, hey, Sean, Sergeant Sean just left, and we were talking about you. You were warming up out there. Oh. 20 years singing the national anthem for this event. Yes. 
Yes. How, how many times a year are you singing the national anthem at events? I am not sure. Um, it actually started when I was in the Navy. Um, I sang for my graduation in the Navy. And then when I joined the police department, I started singing for, I sang for my graduation. And after that, it's just like, it just took off. I mean, a uh, hundred times a year? I wouldn't say that many. I'm I'm like the second person that they asked. Maybe the third person no, that they asked to no, sing. No, no, no. I think you have the best voice out of all of them. 100%. You. I love the way you sing it. <laughs> Thank now, you. Now, when you, did you, were, did you always sing the national, or did you just grow up singing different songs, and you just got a good um, voice, and then... My the mom, Navy, you started the my anthem. mom was a singer, so okay. I think I inherited the singing from her. So we sang a lot in church, um, and just now I sing more for the secular group of people, more so than I do in church right now. Mm -hmm. But um, that's where my background comes from. So they say the national anthem is a very difficult song to sing. Is that true? I would say it depends on the person. Um, I guess because my mom had taught me how to, you know, use my voice and to sing from the diaphragm. It's not as difficult as it appears. And, you know, I think you have to know what key you're starting in and everything. But, yeah, it's. It, I guess it could be. I mean, you should. I butcher it in the shower. I'm terrible <laughs> at it. And um, but I'll start singing from the diaphragm tomorrow. Well, I shower weekly, so... Next week, I will sing from the diaphragm when I'm singing the national you. anthem. You know, it's um, when I started singing this song, too, my husband at the time was in the military, and it meant a lot to me because I couldn't go overseas to fight for our country. One of us had to stay here on land, and I just think about the many people that have sacrificed their time, their life, um, their families for our country, and so that song means a lot to me. Even though I don't know the full song, I only know the verses that I sing, um, it just means a lot to me. How, how long did you serve? Eight years. Eight years That's in the great. Navy. In the Navy. Yes. Thank you for your service. Thank you. There and here. Thank you. One quick question for you. How do you get over the stage, singing in church with your mother? Did that help you get over the stage fright that comes with this? Well, I'm going to tell you, my <laughs> mom, uh, I sang with a, a, a little girl once before, and I giggled because I was scared. I, I'm scared every time I get up here okay. to sing, I to be honest with you. I really am. Um, but I can't see anybody, so that makes it easier. You know, the, the lights. lights. Yeah, <laughs> I can't see anybody. So I just feel like I'm there by myself. So That's awesome. Yeah. That is so cool. Thank you so Thank much. You so Thank much. you. Thank you for all your service in Go. the Navy and in Thank the police. Go it tonight. You <laughs> Thank we'll, you. We'll be listening. I That's appreciate awesome. it. Thanks, Ava. Thank you. Metropolitan Police Officer Eva Malar Galvan. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly hailed at the twilight's last.
all seriousness, uh, I mean, it was a great guest to stop by, but producer John was in. We were just touching on a kind of a bad topic, sad topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, um, you know, Charlie, before we, you know, we came on, it came out that the, uh, the young man had passed away. Um, so, and I know the Blues are doing something uh, Saturday night uh, in honor of Colin. Uh, Colin's father was a commander, I think, in Illinois. State Colonel. Colonel. Yeah. Oh, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. But he was shot uh, there coming back from a hockey game, a uh, random shooting on, on Highway 55 at Loughborough. Um, the father kept driving downtown uh, just to get somewhere where he was familiar with to call the police. Uh, um, like a Good Samaritan story, though, that came out of this is a, a young lady named Lily Panyucky. Uh, she's 20 years old. She, she had just graduated from the uh, uh, EMT uh, school out in St. Charles County. Uh, they had a party bus. One of her friends turned 21, and uh, they went into Ballpark Village, and Lily was too young to get in, so her and another gal stayed on the bus. And they uh, asked the driver to take them somewhere to get a snack, since everybody else was in there partying. And they went to a gas station downtown, and then that's when they uh, drove past uh, the father and the son and, and uh, th there were, you know, the father was calling for help. Uh, Lily jumped out and immediately started rendering first aid, did 20 minutes of CPR until these, you know, the city uh, EMTs got there. So, wow. you know, the kid wouldn't have had a chance to, to survive if it wasn't for her, her action. And, uh, you know, there, there's still heroes out there, even if, you know, 20 I, I years old. I can say one thing that I've gotten more phone calls from people. Whenever something major hits the news, I'll get a few people say, what's going on with this? What? And I tell them if I can. But I got more phone calls to find out about the investigation that's going on with this. And I, I don't have anything to tell them. Although, the, you know, what they saw on the news with the chief, it's going to be a hard one to solve. It, you know, they're doing their best. And I know they're putting every effort into it. But I know that they, they shut the highway down twice now to look for evidence. And I think they got a lot of evidence. So hopefully someone comes mm -hmm. forward and yeah. Hopefully by the time this comes out, maybe we'll have answers. And it isn't it reminiscent of when our friend Patrick McVeigh got yeah you know, he same area him. same area yeah. yeah same area on fifty five he was shot and killed randomly. Uh, great guy from Maggie O'Brien's and uh, almost the same spot in yeah same area. really was R right close and that one's still on so no but it's not it's well not. we can get into it sometime but we feel pretty comfortable the person that did it is uh, no longer with us. So okay. and, and so the enough evidence came out that they're pretty confident and Eddie's comfortable with it. I've met with them and they feel like uh, they've had closure with it. So okay. okay. Well, that's good. That's neat. Well, yeah. young Colin Brown, I mean, it, there's no words, mm -hmm. you know, and here we have, I, I think they believe that it was a rolling gun battle going on on the other side of the highway and, and so a random round came through and killed, turned out it killed Colin. But, you know, it just gives me it just makes me so angry, you know, um, the stupidity that's out there, the dangerousness that's out there. And here we have Paige Spears down there, and we can't get them out. Let's let's get these jerks that did this, and let's get them a cell and, and, and get Paige out of there. So I can't wait till we catch these guys. It's just Yeah, you just hope it's it's um, through ballistics or, or some kind of um, or Somebody knows. Somebody yeah. out there knows, and they just right. need to talk. Yep. Yeah. Somebody knows. So anyway. Our condolences to the family. Absolutely, that, so. definitely, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, you know, and I don't know. So anyway, our last show is, st of, is, is still yeah. humming right now, as Tommy says. Yeah, it's a lot of and a lot of great feedback. You know, personal people sending us messages. I really enjoyed our, our interview with Joe Moqua, and uh, one of the things that we all were talking about before the show was, you know, good leaders like Joe Mokwa and, and several of the people we've had on the show. You, you talk about Joe Spies, the chief of Brentwood, Steve Dodge, the chief of um, Sunset Hills, Harry Hager, who was a retired major, uh, Jack Riley, who was the second in charge of DEA in Washington. Layshock. And, um, and Jerry Layshock, yes, and, um, and a retired uh, lieutenant colonel. They all shared the one thing, and it was they were very passionate about the job first. They didn't come on. I don't think any of them came on thinking, well, I'm going to be the chief. Right. Or I'm going to do this. The first thing they came on was, and they, and they did tremendous police work. And, it, and, and they're, that's the thing, I think, in, in talking to all those guys. The thing they're most proud of is their street time. 
Let's not because and, and you guys can attest to this. You're a lieutenant. You're you you retired as a major, and and Johnny not so much because he only did sergeant. And you can kind of keep involved with your people. Yeah. Kind of have fun. Well, the more you get promoted, it, it, you're take they're taking people away from the stuff they love to do. Yeah. But they do it, in my opinion, and it, and, and I'm speaking about you guys, and and about the people I've mentioned and other great leaders is that they do it because. They they have they do have a love for the job, and that job this job that we are in needs strong leaders. Mm-hmm. And you can only be a strong leader if you were a strong policeman, yep. and you had a passion for the job. And I think that's one of the things that that resonates with all those guys that have been on the show. You know, they they just love for the job first. And I don't think any of them came on. Oh, I think I really want to get promoted ten times. Yeah, <laughs> they, they just come on and they lock people up. And then well, there's some guys that want to do that. What's that? We got plenty that want to do that, not do the skip the street stuff. Oh yeah, yeah but yeah. they don't. And in my, you know, it, it, you think this is about you? It's not. I mean, <laughs> those are the people that don't make the the, the best leaders. No, exactly because right. Because they don't know what all that curtail or what all being a really good policeman or being in good units, what it all entails. I can remember being uh, a uh, young policeman, and as I uh, aged on the police department, just watching different styles of leadership. And, and I, I guarantee you, I know my system was to pick things that I liked and notice things that I didn't like and remember things that I hated and kind of formulate what I want it to be. And I was never driven to uh, start getting uh, promoted until I, the opportunity to start taking tests came out and you saw the people that were lining up to get promoted. And I used to sit there and say, man, I really don't want to be a sergeant or a lieutenant or a captain or a major, but I know I don't want to work for that person, so I better I yep. better get promoted first because I don't think they treat coppers right. I don't think um, – I don't respect their leadership style, so if I have an opportunity to knock them off uh, uh, in, a, in a process, I well, would. I think one of the things, too, J.J., with you, you were a SWAT, or a SWAT mobile guy for as a patrolman for so long. Right. Now you're down there as a lieutenant. Not near as much fun, is it? No, it's more stressful, actually. Right. That's what I'm, people, so, but for me, I didn't. I I didn't even think about getting promoted because I was having so much fun. Right. And that yeah. was 16 years on before I got my first promotion. Yeah. Five years, I got made lieutenant. But you'll also find a lot in mobile over the years. The people that go back there as sergeants and lieutenants, or people that were there as patrolmen, because you do really need to know what right. what that's all about. He wouldn't. They wouldn't get just got my credibility. Not that I have credibility. Right. He's not with Dodge so. and Spies, but. Um, just knowing that I did the, I did the job kind of helps me, I think. Yeah. But it's uh, for me, I always looked up when I, I had good leaders like Spies and Layshock. I never wanted to disappoint them, and that's f- to me that's a sign of a good commander. If you don't want to disappoint your commander, you must and be doing. They something. They don't have to yell. No. Oh no. No. <laughs> just oh. look at they just give you that look. Uh, they can yell once in a while. Oh, they can, <laughs> oh yeah. That's, uh, that's that. That's needed too. Yeah. That is needed too. Uh, Guns and Hoses night, Tommy. What was the other night? Guns and Hoses night. Oh, and the uh, so uh, through the worst day to be on call in IED <laughs> was Guns and Hoses night because everybody comes out of this place ready to go, man. They're, <laughs> they they're just, all fired up. Yeah. They're, they're going to box somebody or do something stupid. <laughs> and the other one was the association dance. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of um, relationship beefs <laughs> um, would, would rear their ugly head during that, for some reason, during that dance. And, <laughs> it was, they were weird. they were on a roll there for like five years after that dance. I think they canceled just because of the right. They were like, we had enough of this. I was in. I spent five years in internal affairs and uh, as deputy commander and producer John. Even though we were the same rank, for some reason I was the deputy commander. We were both sergeants, and uh, producer John. Every day, first of all, let me say we worked together there. But every day, he reminded me that he hated internal affairs and wanted to be moved. <laughs> and I say, would you just please do your investigations and we'll talk about that later but every morning i hate it here and i want to be transferred and uh i just didn't want you to forget <laughs> hey if you like it there in that unit you don't need to be in there well everybody I, should go i there. have a we, we can have it's, a whole long discussion about that because i, I think that, that unit needs some uh uh investigators that have done police work before no, no Other, comment otherwise it could be very dangerous stay out of this conversation. but on guns and hoses night me and john were on a call one time in internal affairs mm-hmm. And there was a famous fight. Was it Paulie's still then? It was uh, Paulie's then. Paulie's. It was Paulie's. <laughs> there was a famous fight between two uh, policemen there that was just an absolute 
battle, and it was bad. And so we we had to send like I don't uh, know if it was a battle, but yeah, go ahead. It was bad. It was bad. I knew that that was true. So internal affairs goes there, and we have to start interviewing people. And we brought like two or three or four of us down there to start the interviews, and then we interviewed everybody at the scene, and then ambulances are leaving, and it was it was bad. We get back down to our notes, and Paulie's had a men's room that was a one seater in a woman's room that was a one-seater, one-person bathroom. We start comparing our notes. Uh, this was after Guns and Hoses. And there was 35 people <laughs> in the men's room yeah. and like 26 yep. in the women's room, per their statements. True. Didn't see nothing. They didn't see anything. I mean, True. hey, how did this start? I was in the men's room. I was in the women's room. I was in the men's room. I was like, man. <laughs> they all got allocated for congregating. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true charge. <laughs> it is a true. It was a true charge. I remember that. Yeah, that. Uh, those are the two nights because you know when you're younger and you come to these fights, that's when everybody would declare that they were fighting the next year. I'm fighting. Oh, 100 percent. I'm doing this I'm, next I, year. There was yeah. 500 people fighting next oh, year. Oh yeah. And then sign up time would come. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know about all that. Yeah, hey, that is so I true. <laughs> yeah. I brought my older brothers uh, one of the first years. We sat and watched it. I had to pull my brother. Dick almost got in a fight with the person in front of him. I'm like, come on, man, let's go. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a little tense out there. Well, you, know. you know, one of my first, I was yeah. in Mobile Reserve, and uh, George Holliker was our captain. And back then it was it was at Keel Auditorium, and it was a s- smaller event but compared to now, but it was still a big event. But Mo- everybody else had off that night except for Mobile, and we had to do the traffic and everything. And so Dickie Burgess and I snuck in once the fight started. And my dad was sitting upstairs for some reason. So I, we, we were sitting with him, and uh, uh, we're in uniform. And, and these people that are, like, in the front row of the balcony come over and says, hey, officers, one of your, one of your other officers is in trouble. I look over to the side, and George Hollicker is just wailing <laughs> on somebody, our captain. <laughs> It, it, and and guns and hoses? Yeah, guns and hoses. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> and it took forever to get, because, you know, they had those ramps that, you know, that went back and forth. Mm-hmm. You, like, you had to run, like, nine different t- times to get down there. By the time we got there, George had these two people wore out. That, <laughs> and he just throws them to us and goes, lock these two Hoosiers up. And so we, <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was it. Did you see that um, in the news? You guys know Paul Bissonette. No, he's, yeah, he, he's on spit, a podcast called Spit and Chicklets about how okay, he used yeah, to yeah. play for the Blues, and he did play a little bit for the Blues. He's tough, he's a pretty tough guy. He, he was known for his NHL prowess and being tough. Well, he went to his favorite bar, our favorite restaurant, um, where he said he usually eats at the bar, um, and I forget the name of it. It's in Houston, I believe. Um, he went, but there was no seats at the bar, so he just went and had a you know sat down at a table by himself. And um, when he's sitting there, he notices that seven dudes are being all crazy at the bar. They had just got done playing golf. And um, so he's kind of paying attention to them. Well, then they started, you know, pumping chests, pointing at the waiters and the waitresses and cussing them out. And he, he enough was enough. You know, he went up and says, listen, you know, you guys can't treat these guys this way. You got to. And then these seven morons just, you know, they're going to puff up on him. Well, the fight's on. Him against seven dudes. And Paul's, you know, his his face got a little messed up, but then they re- they locked up six of these guys. Their faces were all jacked up. <laughs> Paul yeah. Besson, that took them down. I mean, it, it, he's it, not it, even that big of a guy, I don't think. Did they need a cut guy? <laughs> yeah. Come in, they didn't they know if they needed dental work, done. but they needed some dental. I think one of them yeah, might need some dental work. Dentist, you are looking good there. Yeah, they gave us a, the uniforms here, and then I'm wearing a a corner cut man's. Nope. Outfit. So Paul Bissonette did uh, his little guns and hoses right there on the spot. Yeah. yeah. yeah He's right the there on morning. the, took six of them down. To, they, yeah. they all got locked up, but one guy got away. That's the, the first podcast I ever listened to. Spitting Chicklets? Mm-hmm. It's funny. Yeah. If you like hockey, Those it's really good. Great. Yeah, it's good. JJ, what's going on in Shicker Ford of St. Louis? Oh, they're, they're doing good. I actually took my car there. And they Today? dropped it off. They gave me a, a loaner car. And so uh, I got a designated driver tonight. My daughter's coming down. Mm hmm. Um, Anyway, but uh, no, they he j- Ken Plackey's up in the stand somewhere. We're going to meet up with him later. And he wanted us to tell everyone that they have a Chrysler Dodge Jeep. This is reading from his text. Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram store in Union, Missouri. I'm sorry, Washington. Wait, he wants you to brag about the Washington, Washington, Washington Mo store now? 
in Washington, Missouri. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so you know, this is I'm taking your job right now. This I like this. Go ahead. I'm not very good at. It. But he's got a Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram store in Washington, Missouri, and a Ford store, Ford Star store in Union, Missouri. So and then okay. South Kings Highway. South, South Kings that, Highway that is about, your, yeah, the yeah, flagship. Right. Everybody right. knows that. So he's opening it up to all now. Yeah. That's what he oh. said. All right. That's what he's up there, and he said, "Put this on." So. I'll, when our sponsors say something, we do it. So you go to you, you can get some cars in Union? Ford, yep, Ford in uh, Washington, Missouri. Okay, Union in Washington. Shicker Ford of St. Louis growing. Now we're in Washington and Union and uh, awesome. All right. Tom. And, he, and he better have some free beer for us afterwards. Yeah, yeah. we are. We are. Th- this is not like Colombo's where the buckets were just keep coming down. It's stuff. tight. Things are tough <laughs> here. <laughs> Even though it's sponsored by Budweiser. Can we, how do we get a cigar? You go to uh, the Riverman Cigar Company. Which is uh, 8984 Watson Road. See Dan Ponder, you know, friend of the police and uh, police family. Any kind of cigar you want, you know, from the three dollar to the thousand dollar. Um, Dan will take care of you. First responders, military, all get discounts. And uh, Dan's just a great guy. Go see him, and uh, you know, because a lot of our our profession does smoke and chew on cigars. Yes, they do. Very good. Hey, did you know that um, since Spies and them are all here? Yeah. And a bunch of muni coppers that I have. Uh, Corby Campbell's guys going to escort me around. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 good call. You, you got a hold of them at uh, CampbellSecurityGroup.com. I, I he said he'll, he'll do it for free tonight. I appreciate that. So I said, send me your biggest guys. We're going to go taunt some of these. Because I, I guarantee it's going to be beef on site when we see Dodge and <laughs> Yeah. Did you tell the audience? Yeah, you did say it. We're going to go right. out and we're going to. Well, uh, and I, JJ's going to meet JJ with the chief. In, 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 in a way, you know. He does have a, 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 a beef um, with people that leave too early, but he also has beef with, with people that leave late, too, because he, in my opinion, J.J. just feels like he's been abandoned. No, no. I, if you do he's, time, he's just I, been abandoned. It, he's, on the, he's on the, he's just if watching. If you don't do your 20 in the city, then shame on you. And Joe Spies did more than 20, so did Steve Dodge, so I give them credit. Oh, see, yeah, not, but here's ass. what makes you mad. They, they, won't, they steal city, or county, uh, city yeah, guys. Stop. And the thing is, they, would use, they don't do it anymore. They'd call me and say, hey, you know such and such? i go, yeah. Is he a good copper? I'd be like, and whenever I knew what they were doing, I'd say, no. <laughs> they're terrible. I go take them. They're a piece of shit. And he goes, they're, they're. At first, they're like, you serious? <laughs> Are you serious? I go, yeah, they're terrible. And I, good riddance to them. And they're like, they don't know what to say. And then I got to come in on my cell. I go, I'm just joking. He's fine, I, I guess. And so, and then they, so Spies would, you know. So he, you feel abandoned. I'm telling you, <laughs> you just have that, you have that abandoned feeling. You just, like well, John was telling that story last week where he picked up the guy that his officers were chasing. Yeah. And he got him in the right. car, and then yeah. he looked at the officers, and they're just sitting there like, with their hands up, going, "What the fuck?" Yeah, that's <laughs> where you're at right now, JJ. You're just watching everybody leave and going, "What the fuck?" Everybody's here, looking in the rearview mirror. And this they're is, just sitting I there think like I might have told this story. Uh, a guy from Columbia, Missouri. I, t- I told this story. I won't tell it again. About him, him calling me. I didn't know who it was. Ended up being my yeah, 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 yeah. He, yeah. he thought I was that's crazy, a good story. Crazy. So, yeah, if you call me and ask me about City Copper, I'll probably give you bad info on him. Yeah. You I know. Get it. Got to keep the good ones. This uh, podcast <laughs> is growing. We had a little, uh, we were on Chris Hayes' uh, mm-hmm. Fox News with the Fox. Chris, with Paige Spears thing. We're going to be on the uh, uh, Dave Glover show. Monday. Monday coming up. So if you listen uh, to this in the morning at 2.30 on Monday, myself and Danny have been invited on the Dave Glover show on KMOX. And so we're just trying to get the wave to build across the country, across the world. We're in... Uh, uh, so many different countries, up probably up to sixty. Would, uh, to billion, with, yeah, sixty billion listeners. <laughs> sixty billion <laughs> listeners. Um, but you need to like, subscribe, and share. We have to get those buttons. It's so easy to do when you're watching. Yep. You just please click, like, subscribe, and share. Um, keep the blue wave going. Um, and one of the things too is that you know, tell your friends about. We're all on a social media. I get it. Not everybody's a podcast person. You know, yeah. Because their attention spans are similar to mine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, you know, have them follow us on um, any of the social medias, the brighter side of blue. The, all you got to do is get into the search bar of whatever social media that they like. Send them uh, some of our clips that may be entertaining to you. Send them to your friends, and that really helps us grow. Keep it going. Yeah. So um, we're going to get to uh, JJ Zen. I know you're sitting on one uh, because we have to get out and start catching a bus and uh, mm-hmm. some of our on-the-fly stuff we got going. But, be, JJ. The bus is going to be around 545. But okay. by Zen... Let's hear it. Sugar Ray Leonard. From Sugar Ray Leonard. Boxing is the ultimate challenge. There is nothing that can compare to testing yourself every time you step into the ring. 
That's it. I'm not repeating it, Danny. I know you looked at me like you didn't. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't going to ask you to repeat it. I was going to ask for the second paragraph. Boxing <laughs> is the ultimate challenge. There's nothing that can compare to tra- testing yourself the way you do every time you step into the ring. I have to agree with that, though. It's very appropriate for tonight. If guns I'm and hoses. You, you know, there's a lot I, of sports. That I think you I can might have skipped the line in the first time I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I think you did. You, gotta either, you just don't wear your cheaters, dude. You just need to get them things yeah, on. I have, I, memori- I have it kind of memorized. If I can but wear I a trust. dentist outfit. You can wear your oh, no, cheaters. Who cares? I, do, I, I, I wear them solid. Yeah, I, I yeah, can't see. I can't see shit. That was a good j- zen, JJ. Good one, Sugar Ray Leonard. For, for good, this for you guns remember the um, and I'm sure I'm, I'm uh, the Twilight Zone. Yeah, um, and I was watching that as a kid, and one of the, the the shows ended where the guy was the last guy on Earth, and he had his he had his reading glasses. Yeah. He loved he loved to read. That's all he, he loved to read, and he stepped on them glasses to end the show. Oh, that's so I sad. I couldn't imagine. I mean, if I if I lose my glass, I can't read nothing. Man. Oh no, I can't see a menu at the restaurant without oh, my cheers. Horrible. That was Burgess. <laughs> right. Burgess <laughs> Meredith played that guy. Okay, yeah, you Burgess. guys are aging nice, yourself. Jeff. So most of the people I know, these two do not even. They have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, they will Twilight. Zone. And they, when they no hit the forty five, yeah, I don't they, even remember. That. They don't even you know, know what it, yeah. what it's like to be blind. We got a fight going on out there. The fights have started, oh, so we got to get we got to get going. What are you talking about? It's, oh, there is some people. It's five minutes to five. They don't start to five thirty. Okay, well, what are they? Who, who's high, that? Casper. Those are highlights, dude. Okay, I got you. Oh, they're they're yeah, showing no, highlights. Yeah, they're showing highlights. Oh god. They, 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 sometimes, they, sometimes they take these things and show them later. <laughs> <laughs> All You're right. almost live. You got me. You got me. Producer John, do you have a newsroom.com over there? Come smart on, ass. Johnny. Friday, May eighth, nineteen eighty-seven. Back in the day, police and firefighters square off. It, it was the first, it was called the Metro Boxing Showdown back yeah. then at the Keel Auditorium. It, um, and back then it was a Saint, it was St. Louis City police and fire versus everybody else. You know, Highway Patrol, county coppers, muni coppers. They, they, they let a lot of muni coppers fight, JJ. They got to prove themselves somewhere. Oh. But here, here, it was just a, <laughs> <laughs> it was just a very short. Won't stop. He won't <laughs> stop. Very yes, short article here. Area policemen and firefighters will remove their badges and put on the gloves in a benefit boxing match at 7.30 tonight at Keel Auditorium. Each, uh, each of the 30 bouts will be limited to three 90-second rounds with the help of St. Louis Amateur Boxing Association. Um, the contestants have been matched by age and weight. Tickets range from $4 to $10. Whoa. They're on sale at the police and fire stations. In the area and at the Keel Auditorium, proceeds go to the Backstoppers, 650 member organization, assist families and uh, policemen and firefighters who die in the line of duty. So that this is the original article. That's the only one I can find about it. Uh, you know, leading up to it. So wow, 1987. Let me but ask. You, I, I gotta ask you. I have a good question about this. Yeah, okay. JJ. It's such a successful fundraiser. I mean, a million dollars yeah. every year. Mm-hmm. Do any other cities? Mimic us now? Yes, they yeah, do. There's a bunch of them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I knew you, now the New original York used to one do hockey game. Fire. I mean, that thing is yeah. like it's like that I would like really to go big, to that. Yeah. The Actually, original one was supposed to be the city versus St. Louis City versus New York City. Yeah. And they looked at the you know, the average age of a city copper back then was 44, and the average age of a New York copper was like 20 something, and of course they have. Thirty thousand officers. Yeah, right. right. So the it, it the the math didn't work on that. So that's when they decided to do it. But I was going to read the name of everybody who fought in the first fight, but I'm not going. We don't have enough time. But <laughs> thanks, John. Listen to some <laughs> of the. Well, I think the, the <laughs> those guys deserve it. But here are some names that we that we all remember. Okay. That fought for the city. Um, Don Cummings. You guys remember him? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Vince Magala. Yep. Vinny. Vinny is a great guy. Mike Rowe, the Irishman. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite people, Paul Pfeiffer. Yep. Mm-hmm. Joe Brower. Yep. Sam Zuglas. Yep. Sam Simon, another great okay. guy I used to work for. Kenny Hornack was. A Gosh, all great these great names. Team. Yeah, great guy. Of course, guy. Jerry Layshock fought in that first fight. Yeah. Uh, uh, now the head of uh, Backstoppers, Larry O'Toole. Um, and uh, uh, another legend that we probably haven't talked about enough is uh, Terry James fought in that first. TJ. T- yeah, yeah, TJ. Hey, can, that's a picture. You you had a picture sent. Is there a way you can put that on the 
and honor them on the podcast, put them on the, the web page. On the yeah. web page, yeah. Try to. Yeah, yeah. That's a cool picture. Uh, they okay. just put a, um, on the screen that we're in our in our room here, they just put up uh, Colin, um, Colin Brown. Colin picture. Brown's picture, 16-year-old hockey player. So they're probably going to do something for him tonight here, and uh, unbelievable. Sad. This is terrible. Sad. But um, one of the um, other things is that we still got a pimp Columbo's, right? Oh um, yeah, yeah. You know, just because yeah. we're not there, we you we know you got to go down there and uh, daily lunch specials and get the Cbos. Now people are coming in there and asking for the Cbos from the from the yeah. podcast. Now yeah, Greg yeah. says the Cbos thin crust pizza, unbelievable. And our condolences to Katie Colombo. Katie's yeah. father passed at the age of I believe is eighty four years old. Um, services this Saturday. So uh, I was reading his. Uh, I, did, I was going to say that. And you just and you just. Knew. Just by reading that, you knew. I how wanted fun to drink a, a beer with him. Yeah. yeah, you just knew how fun of a guy what he was. What an all-American guy, though. Oh yeah, I read yeah. that old bit. Yeah, he was into everything and good time. Always. And good our for condolences. You know, the, you know, the Columbo's is part of our family. Hundred percent. And uh, Katie is uh, part of that too. So, our condolences go out to Katie and. Uh, uh, yeah, very good call. Yep. And then the other, uh, we want to invite people to come to Columbo's uh, on Thursdays with us. We start at around five thirty. Um, we're not going to, we, we talked about it several times of putting the guest out. And, you know, a lot of times we don't want to put the guest out just in case. Yeah. Um, policemen tend to uh, have some rivalries out there from people they've locked up to whatever. And we don't want to take that chance. But you, you can guarantee we're going to have fun, right? Oh, 100%. No matter, no matter we're going to have fun. Guess is, we're going to have fun. And even if we suck, the CBOs and the lunch specials are, and the food's right. unbelievable. Uh, occasionally. The beer's right. ice cold. So one last thing, or maybe one last thing. What are you wearing, Tom? Oh, we got our hoodies. John. New hoodies got in. Uh, Danny's got one on underneath. This is one of the older ones. Yeah. Danny's got one of the new ones on. Quarters. JJ's got one of the quarter zips on. So basically what we're doing is we've redone our merch line, and we've taken it local with Dolly and Steve at uh, Apparel Pro. Pro. Um, Steve. Steve's the owner. Dolly, Dolly is his mom, so it's a family business. They've been doing stuff for police officers forever. Um, so we hooked up with them. So now when you go to our webpage, uh, thebrightersideofblue.com, is that you can go to our merchandise and instead of taking it at, you know, what we'll call an inferior company in Texas, um, <laughs> yeah. it takes you right here locally. And these things are... They're, they're man, thick and strong. They're so very nice. Deep. High quality yep. uh, hoodies. And then, you know, we, and we're, we've brought... Um, the, the, the menu's not as huge as the other place. But we're going to re-up it every once in a while. You know, right now it's obviously winter. So we got the hoodies out at JJ's Quarters. Show your support for the you podcast, should. for the Blue Wave. Yep. Just get go, some, to go to our get thing. Get some and, gear. And Hats. at Columbo's, too, is if you, you know, we got about six tables that people can sit at. But if you know you're coming down, a good idea would be to call down there uh, and reserve a table. And then that way we know that you'll have a for seat. the basement. Um, and if we, hopefully we get too crowded, and then we go upstairs, right? We just take <laughs> yeah. over the take yeah. over the whole take friggin' it, place. Take it over. That's take right. Over. right. So. And then we got one other thing coming up that we're going to do at the end of every show. And uh, we did it last week, and Jack trying to put it out, just a little sample out on Saturday. Um, but it's called the uh, Mugshot Matching Game. We had a lot of fun with that, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> so it, gets a little, it got a little crazy. We, we were terrible yeah, at it. We yeah, were we were bad. terrible at it. So what happens is, is they put four mug, or we put five mug shots up, um, and there's some crazy looking people in there. And then below it is five crimes and you have to match the crime with the mugshot. And it got really funny. And, um, we'll, it, this is be Monday. So some of you probably will already have, uh, watched a little, we, what is it, Jack? Five, 10 minutes, five minutes of just the, the, what it's like, but what we're going to do there is pick three people from the audience. They're going to come up one at a time and then they're going to play the game. And then whoever gets the most right. We'll get a uh, a T-shirt, a, a brighter side of blue T-shirt, and then we'll. Uh, if you get three right, and it, it doesn't sound, it, getting three right is really freaking hard. It's really hard. And then uh, if you get three right, you're all going to be put in for the grand champion, right, Jack? We we'll try to come <laughs> up with a grand champion over the next six months or so. Nice. That, that's good. The, the merchandise looks great, and uh, come and see us. Uh, I have some. Um, um, Oh, appropriate you useless information. Come on with for, it. I love you. That's I mean, here your useless work. information. I'm dig I'm digging that. Yeah. Well, I mean, because it's the it's the night of. So Come on. do I get a stick around? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's the police versus the fire tonight. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. say something about the uh, fire to p relative to fire. So the original patent holder for the fire hydrant 
the inventor of the fire hydrant, the original, pat, the original patent holder, is unknown because the facility that stored that patent burnt to the ground. <laughs> Look at that. That's a fitting end. It's kind of like a, you know, what are they, I don't know what they actually call that. I don't know what they call fitting, that. Fitting, I guess. It, it was, it's just, it's a, uh, it's weird though. But so nobody knows the original patent holder of the uh, fire hydrant and the guy that invented it because it burnt down in the in the fire. So they didn't give it to anybody. You know, so it never got invented. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how how that. You didn't do the follow up, did you? And then the uh, original boxing. So it's, it's a box off site. The original rules of boxing when it was when it was in its infancy. A, the, a match did not conclude until somebody was either dead or unconscious. That's a, that. That's kind of rough. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool, though. <laughs> <laughs> that would be kind of cool to see. Oh, yeah, dude. a Roman. All right. Like, it sounds like that's a bachelor party. <laughs> 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 it's unbelievable. Yeah. That is crazy. Dead um, or passed out. Dead or unconscious. All right. What is it? The Queensberry rules, or is that? Yeah, I don't know. Am I saying that wrong? Is that the like that bare fisted stuff, right? No, I think. Well, yeah, maybe. I think this, but that, that's how boxing started, though. I mean, obviously. Yeah, J- I Jim think they J- still say Jack Queens Johnson, Barry. Jim Johnson, Jack Johnson, Johnson, Jack Johnson. Okay. Last, last. I'm gonna like like I'm always doing. I'm making people smarter. Our listeners. Yeah, There's yeah, 17 you know. million people that are smarter after listening to our show because of me. Fitting to be. I mean, you guys help, but I bring the I bring the facts. I, I bring the thunder. That's what it's about. It's it's a cloudy, rainy day when we leave here tonight. The clouds. So I'm going to ask producer John. Did you know that the average cumulus cloud weighs 551 tons? Did you know clouds even weighed anything? I want to know who weighed it. <laughs> that's a, that's no, a hey, that's no, I can break that down. That sounds can, like some shit I break. I can up. answer that. I can answer that. I can answer that. But I don't want to go that depth. No, but I, no, no, I need, no, we need it now. No, no. people make us smarter. Make us a lot smarter. Five hundred and fifty-one tons that's, of cloud weighs. I got. I'm gonna back check thunder, that for the a, first time. At no, one no, of your stuff. You can do it. Listen to this. I'm because I have to get this number right. A thunderstorm, a thunderstorm cloud, can weigh two million tons. Now, how, a cloud, how, do, how does it fly? It flies because uh, the air below it is more dense, so that stays above it. It also flies because it's a cloud is spread out over large spaces, and each it's made up of billions of individual particles of water and uh, um, ice. How okay, come a, a plane can fly through it because it's it just separates. It just pushes them because the it just pushes them. Just believe me on this. Okay. Okay. Quit busting balls. Uh, where do where do clouds go to die? <laughs> to the ground because it. It, it rains. So no, dude, that's another thing I just needed you to That was believe. made up. That, that's a, that's a, that's you that's might not have made up the rest of the shit. You just made that yeah, up. Yeah, I got busted there, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, that was the look on your face. I just made that shit All up. Right. Yeah. It's a well, look I've had we on can my conclude face many with a that. Time. We can conclude with that. Uh, you know, but we do... Jack, you can cut the last five minutes out and we'll be good. No. You know what? You, you know, there's, a, there's also a scientific fact. The brain, the human brain, never stops eating itself. The human brain never stops eating itself. It's an actual process. Until it thinks about clouds floating. Is that how it eats itself? Phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is the, is the uh, act of your brain eating itself. It has to continually eat itself. I think JJ's is a little hungrier than more people's. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I st- JJ's brain's I a fat ass. <laughs> JJ's that. brain's a fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm JJ's sorry. brain's hungry. <laughs> Tommy, how about our JJ's brain tastes like the Taco Bell or the uh, Jack in the Box tacos. That moment, keep that on, gr- keep on eating. <laughs> that ain't no taco. It's a grease. Are ball. you are you a Jack in the Box taco fan? I am. I don't know why. JJ, no. Johnny, yes. When drinking, yes. Jack, <laughs> Jack in the Box tacos, no. Can't do Jake. Them. Jake, yes. Jake, Jake's, Jake's in. No one cares. No. JJ, cares. our content's over. Our we content's over. Well, I guess Tommy, I'll say what do you now. got for us? I guess us? I'll say it now that the communities that uh, support law enforcement are safer places to live. Because they are. And then tune in because we're going to have some stuff coming from you. We just don't know what. And right, happy Jack? Thanksgiving. We got this, baby. Let's go, baby. Happy Thanksgiving. No, no, Peace. No, no. Thanksgiving's already over.
Hey, hope I hope you guys had, had a good. Had a hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Love that turkey. Right. That's some good stuff. Hey, welcome to On the Streets, the brighter side of blue. On the Streets. This is Danny. Today we have with us Heather Rodden. Heather, welcome. Hi. Good to see you. Thanks for having so, me. Heather, it's kind of neat. Uh, uh, your husband Greg Rodden's fighting Guns and Hoses this year. Yes. How's it been? It He's uh, been training now for three years, uh, so from like August to November, three nights a week, two to three hours. Three years for this night. For this night, yes, we're and, ready. And all the trainings, it's a, it's a, it's a commitment. It's all on their own time, right? Yes, yes. They have selected slots, and you got to make it to the slot, and you got to make your time, or you don't get the time. It just goes to show the amount of dedication for a great cause, right? Yeah, yes, definitely. I mean, guns and hoses, backstoppers, it's it's the official kickoff of the uh, holiday season, of the Thanksgiving season. That too. So um, what's going to be cool, Heather, is we're going to have you wired up on the night of the fights. And you don't have to worry about our cameraman. We just want to see your reaction and all the emotions that come with three years of training for Greg yes. come to a culmination in the ring yes. uh, Wednesday night. Yes, he's you excited. excited? Yeah. Are you excited? I am ready. Yes, I'm ready to see him get in there and show what he's been uh, training for all this time. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a true commitment. It's for you as well, because he's out of the house. Do you have, kill, do you have children? Yes, 13, 7, and 5. Oh, yeah, yeah, so it's a sacrifice for you as well. So, well, we wish him luck, and yes. thank you for talking to us, and we'll see yeah. you Wednesday night. See you Wednesday. We, we need to get her a uh, number so we can text and find out exactly where you're sitting and all yep. that stuff. For sure. All right, thanks, Heather. Game on. All right. The red corner, make some noise for Andrew Gennady. Come on up, Andrew. <laughs> this is going to be a cruiserweight boxing match. Andrew's official weight, 189.4 pounds. His opponent from the St. Louis City Police Department. Welcome, Greg Roden. Greg Rodden, official weight, 187.7 pounds. A cruiserweight boxing match, your second bout of the night, Wednesday night. We say, Greg. One more time, let's hear it for Andrew Gennady and Greg Rodden. Make some noise. second talking about the result because Greg your husband's a winner immediately yeah for sure I mean it's unbelievable the courage and the work and dedication for this cause to step into that ring in front of 12,000 people plus on TV is immense yes okay yes. how proud are you of Greg extremely proud he's worked super hard for the last three years for months on end and he got in that ring and he showed up and showed out for his town for his city and for his brothers and sisters in blue and red and there'll be a million dollar check handed over to uh, backstoppers thanks to Greg yes and he landed some bombs he did he and did I'm he, proud of him he had a tough big guy it was a he's a winner and I'm so proud of him I've known him for so long it was so neat to watch you in action for your husband. <laughs> yes coach yes sir sergeant Matt Rodden 37 37 years on the job yes sir how proud are you your son oh a chip off the old block yeah. I couldn't be prouder uh, to actually donate time, energy, effort to charity. I told them, hey, whether you whether you are the winner or the loser, to go out in front of 15 to 20,000 people and to do it for charity, I couldn't be more proud. And I agree. And I couldn't be more proud of him. I know your son. I've known you for so long. I'm so proud of Greg. And like I said, the result is meaningless. He's been a, he's been a fighter all of his life. Uh, one of his one of his former sergeants, Reggie Davis, calls him Scrappy. <laughs> said he would take Scrappy do in a fight with anyone. And uh, fortunately, over the last several years, he hasn't had to. Yeah. But he made a name for himself in his young days, and he's still making a name for himself here. Name for me, I couldn't be more proud. 
his wife, his kids at home. Just and I'm proud. Thank him when you see him. Give him a big oh, hug. Shoot. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Give him a big hug for me, yes, too. Certainly, Happy Thanksgiving. Certainly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Hi, we're with uh, April Decker. This is uh, the only female bout will be her. And who's your point opponent? Uh, I believe her name is Angelina. I do not know her last name. And you're fighting for a fire department? I am. Which is? Uh, Bertelza Fire Department. And how long have uh, you been training? Have you ever fought before? I have. So I fought in Guns and Hoses um, two years ago um, in St. Louis. And then I've also fought in a Kansas City version uh, about four years ago. So this will be my third Guns and Hoses. All right. How often have you fought outside of uh, this Guns and hoses stuff. Um, I have not had a fight outside of guns and hoses. Um, every year it comes up, though I train for it and try to get involved with it. What's your record? Two and zero. Very good. Two wins. Yep. Oh wow. <laughs> so what makes you want to do this? Um, so actually, uh, I come from a small town, Bertelzo, um, Illinois, about 600 people. Um, a while ago, 11 years ago, we lost a very close family friend. His name was Tim Jansen. Um, he died in the line of duty as a firefighter. Wow. Um, so I do that to support him um, and his family and everybody else. That's awesome. Now, how many people will be there at the night of the fights when you on? Well, we do have a party bus. I think the capacity <laughs> of it is about 30. Um, but I, I plan on quite a few people being Now, what kind of family members do you have showing up? Um, parents, siblings, aunt, uncles, cousins, a little bit of everybody. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, who would be the most interesting person for us to mic up while you fight? Who would be the most animated? I want to say that guy over there. He's one of my good buddies. Uh, he's been my friend for a long time. So. Okay. All right. So <laughs> if you don't mind, I'm going to put him up. He'll, we'll put a mic on him that night if we yeah. can find him. That would be great. All right. Anything else you want to say? I don't think so. Well, I appreciate you doing this. It's awesome. I know it's a lot of stuff going on. It's a kind of crazy time. And you're about to weigh in, right? We did. I just weighed in a minute ago, but I know we do the big one in front of everybody right, right. soon. So. We're going to videotape that, too. So awesome. Good luck. And I... Uh, we have somebody we'll root for now. So. Awesome. Well, thank Wait, but you're you. on the fire department side, though, right? This, yes, I am, <laughs> but... We're the but, brighter side. We're, we're pro-police, but we'll, I'm, I'm going to make an exception for you. I like it. I All accept right. it. Right. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. April represents the Bartelso Fire Department. She went in officially 142.2. She's set for a middleweight bout, where she will be taking on Angelina France Bailey. Comes Angelina representing the Belleville Police Department. Angelina's official weight 148 even. All right, make some noise for the ladies April and Angelina. A middleweight bout, the second televised bout Wednesday night, live from the Enterprise Center. All right, make some noise, St. Louis. Let them hear you. This, we're at Guns and Hoses with a, with the family of April Decker. This isn't her first rodeo. She's fought a few times. How many? This is her husband. What's your name? Logan Decker. Logan. Now, how many? She's she she fought a couple times, correct? Yeah, she's uh, fought and, Guns and, and, and Hoses. And twice. she's two and zero. Yep. We really need her to win this fight because the last guy we interviewed, uh, or the last wife we interviewed, they lost. So we want to win. We got to need need her to win this. So how do you think your chances are? I, I think she looks like. They're underestimating her because she's got some experience. I don't oh, know. Yeah. I know nothing about the other girl. Yeah, she, she's a gamer. She's a, she's a good athlete. So I'm, I, think she, I think she's got it. Oh, yeah. Now, mom and dad are here, and her brother. And you, what's your name? I'm Phyllis. Phyllis. Mark. Mark. And you're, and you're a brother, Blake. Yep. Okay. As a parent and a brother and a pop, how nervous are you when you get to see this fight? Um, mom is very nervous. <laughs> but it's not your first time you see your fight. No, third time. So she, third time. So yep. she's got, she's pretty tough. And she knows she it. Is, but it's a great a thing girl. that she's. It's awesome what she's doing. Um, that's all I really got to say. You got anything you want to say? Or she's no. just always been a great athlete, and she's pretty. Should be really very spunky out there. Okay, I, 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 she didn't I, listen to her mom very much. <laughs> her mom tells her to stop doing it. She keeps going. Well, this, I think this will be her last fight. As a mom, I hope so. <laughs> well, I don't know though. For well, sure. she looks pretty good. We watched her in the box off, and, and she looked great. We have all the faith in the world in her. So let's uh, let's get bring home a winner because we need one. 
Yes. It's a podcast. We want a winner. But if we don't, it's what she does. You got to be proud of the fact that what she's doing before. I'm proud either way, win or lose. Like I put on a post, like it's incredible that she's here and she gets in that rank and does that, and she gives it her all. And I'm just proud of her for doing that. I agree. We're all proud of her. It's a heck of a charity that she's doing it for, yes. and she's putting herself on the line for 18,000 plus people. It's it's got to be an adrenaline rush, but it's also got to be scary. Yes. It so is. We, we're we're hoping we're pulling far. Yeah. So okay, Brother we decide. Got to say here. We're gonna. You say nothing about no, sister? I'm good. <laughs> could, you, could you take her when you were younger? She older or younger? She's older. Okay. So she, she used to beat me up. When I, was <laughs> <laughs> I would I, I wouldn't fight her now either. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> but you can probably take. Her. All right, and then uh, we're going to have, I guess, Scott put the mic on in front of hers. He yes. said he's been a buddy for a long time. He says he's animated. Yes. And he also said he'll probably cuss on it. So I think that would be our best person yes. to put the mic on. You guys are good with us? Oh, yeah. With you, you got first dip. That's the material you want. No, we just want somebody, the emotion of them fighting will be fun. Oh, yeah, that's Scott. Give it to Scott. All right. Give it to Scott. All right. Thank Very you. Good. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Get her ass in here. Grab her dick and trust it. First of all, I want to say congratulations. That was an unbelievable fight, and your daughter is one tough girl. She, she, she was. We thought we watched a lot of fights. She is technically unbelievable. She was, and she won. I want to say she won a unanimous decision. Where did she learn to fight like that? <laughs> no answer. But she's. I, mean, she, I, I, I swear, I, I'm a box. I love boxing. I watch. I, I watch a lot of boxing. I think she's got. She could actually go. You don't want to hear this. To the next level. If she wanted to. But you don't want to. Do it. She is. She was good. And then the girl she fought is big, strong, was good. But there was nothing she couldn't handle. Your April was just fantastic. But anyway, but we're getting away from all that. But I want. Can you? One of you explain why she's a part-time police officer, right? So and you used to be a police officer, right? Yeah, we, we both used to be full time. Yeah, full time. Until we had kids, we got four, or soon to be four and one now. So. Tell us why, and I think it's an interesting story on why she fights for the fireman side. Um, I, I probably have to punt to Scott here. Scott? Yeah. Uh, I, I, big I'm part. Uh, we've always grown up, best friends, family. Uh, Phyllis actually gave the eulogy when my uncle got uh, passed away by a fire truck and uh, always been close family friends and like just friends in general so and now I suck at talking so yeah right? yeah yeah and she fights for the fire and your your uncle was a firefighter yeah he was a firefighter for Santa Fe fire department that's why you guys got the shirt yeah. so you represent she, and that's uh, pretty neat we've always been family always been close and it's awesome and so I, I, he got he got a little emotional on that and I understand why and I didn't I know I never I didn't ask these questions before but yeah. I see the shirts and I should have that should have been a clue to me that why is SF 76 fire department, but yeah. and I know why. And I apologize. It's an honor that you're, she fights for us. And you're a little proud of her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Just a little. That's awesome. And I, I thank you for your time. She's going to out drink us. We got a party bus on the way home. Oh, man. The party bus is going to rock and roll tonight. Yeah. Um, I don't have a ride home. Can I just come? Can yeah. I stay in yeah. the night? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going home with them, guys. Perfect. Thank you so much, man.